Good morning. Good morning. Once again, it's a beautiful Sunday morning. I'm glad to be here. Last Sunday, I was away somewhere, but I listened to the service. And I want you to know that I heard Mike's voice loud and clear singing and praising God. And I'm thinking, I know that voice. And at communion time, I saw Mike came up. So welcome back. Thank you for coming. Today, once again, we have with us our past vicar, Reverend Judy Torbin. She wants to be called Pastor Judy, so remember that all the, the reverends have their way and want to be addressed. So the first thing I asked people was, how do you want me to call you? So I don't call them the wrong name. I want to ask a favor of you guys. It's been a trying time for all of us. We're overloaded in the things we're doing. There's a few of us that are doing a lot of things. One of the things that's happening, we are running short on printing stuff. Ink is very expensive for the printer we have. So I'd like to ask you guys, if you don't mind and you can, please bring your printed bulletin with you. That will save us paper, that will save us ink, that will save us money. We're not getting the same type of financial backing that we got prior to this pandemic. So let's try to help ourselves out by doing that. We are grateful that the priest that we are having come to us is asking for minimum dollar payment, the lowest that's on the scale, and of course their uh, mileage. Most priests are not taking what we are giving. So we are very fortunate to keep doing that. Um, so please, Think about it and print your bulletin at home and bring them with you. Let us steady ourselves and prepare for our sportship. Lord God, we ask that you guide our minds and hearts today. Teach us to walk in your way and not our way. To do the things that you would have us do and not the things that we want to do. When we're struggling, remind us that Jesus walked in the way of struggle to bring us where we are today. We ask all this in your name, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
be the one holy and living God, for your forever and ever. Amen. And please join me in saying our covenant for purity. Almighty, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that they may perfectly love you and magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Scoffing, 
and fools hate knowledge. Give heed to my reproof. I will pour out my thoughts to you. I will make my words known to you. Because I have called and you refused, have stretched out my hand and no one heeded. And because you have ignored all my counsel and would have none of my reproof, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when panic strikes you. When panic strikes you like a storm and your calamity comes like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you, then they will call upon me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but will not find me. Because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. Would have none of my counsel and despise all my reproof. Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their way and be sated with their own devices. For waywardness kills the simple, and the complacency of fools destroys them. But those who listen to me will be secure and will live at ease without dread of disaster. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Thanks be to God. God. Our psalm today is Psalm 19, and we will read responsibly by half verse. The heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament shows its handiwork. One day tells its tale to another. And one, and one night imparts knowledge to another. <laughs> Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands, and, and their death is to the end of the world. In the deep has he set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of the chamber. It rejoices like a champion to the rest of course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs around to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous yet together. More to be desired as they than gold, much more than fine gold. Sweeter far than honey, than honey in your home. By them also is your servant enlightened. And in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often he offends? Cleanse me from my secret thoughts. <clears throat> Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be all of sound. And innocent of the Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, O Lord, the second reading is from the book of James. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect. Able to keep the whole body in check with a bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships, though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them. Yet they are guided by a very small rudder, wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also, the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole body sets on fire the cycle of nature, 
and it itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species. But no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursings. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the sea, excuse me, from the same opening, both flesh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or a grapevine figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. The word of the Lord. Thank you, be to God. God.
strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen.
So those are the kinds of things that we're going through today. But then, um, watching TV all this week, it dawned on me a little late, perhaps, this is what I'm speaking very clearly, that we are, well, we can't call it celebrating, but observing the 20th anniversary of Congress. Now, I am a born and raised in New York. I grew up on Long Island. My brothers commuted into Lower Manhattan to go to uh, Jesuit Military High School in Francis A. Um, and the attack on the Twin Towers became very personal to me even though I had been living in California for a number of years. Actually, I was not even in the country on 9-11. That's another story for a time when we were, I was wishing we would have coffee hour. <laughs> I actually was in London. Uh, we landed, and my friend and I landed in London on the day of 9-11. And of course, being in the air and being on an American Airlines flight, there was no news that was broadcast upon that plane. Um, so it wasn't until we had landed and we flew into Heathrow and took the tube to Pearl's Court Station and checked into our hotel. And my friend said, I need to change some American dollars into local currency. So we went to one of those kiosk um, newspaper stands on the street. And when she put her American dollars down on the counter, the man who was running that kiosk looked at us and he pointed to a TV monitor that he had in his little stand. And he said, the second tower is in. And we had no idea what he was talking about. But then, of course, that video was on a continuous tape all during that week. Um, at the end of that week, that Friday, there was a service primarily for the expat community of Americans in London. And it was held at St. Paul's Cathedral. The Queen came down from vacation, came down from Balmoral. She was there. Prince Philip was there. Prince Charles. Um, the Archbishops of Canterbury and York kind of celebrated the Eucharist. The American Ambassador to England um, read the prayers of people. Uh, Prince Philip read. It was an incredible experience. And um, we had to be inside St. Paul's uh, 45 minutes before the Queen arrived. And the doors were closed and locked. <clears throat> and I so we had a lot of time on our hands. Um, sitting next to me was an elderly lady from, I said it. <laughs> um, she was from Norwich. And she had taken three different buses, leaving at the crack of dawn in the morning to get to St. Paul's for that service. And I said, why in the world would we go through that for service primarily for the Americans living in London? And she said, you people came to our aid during World War II. My husband died in that war, but we as a people were so grateful for your intervention. It's the least I can do to be here with you. And that was the incredible feeling all through the city about all week, but I digress. <clears throat> so recognizing that it's now today, the day after this. 20th anniversary. Um, I started looking 
being a different view at what our readings are today. And in this case, I <clears throat> I started looking at uh, wisdom, but also uh, James and um, our theme our songs today, and trying to think. Where do I go with this? I'm not sure in some ways you're feeling overloaded with information that I'm It was hard enough to go through the first time around. It's difficult to go through again 20 years later. And sometimes even the hardest and the most heartfelt emotion <laughs> tired me out after all after so much repetition and pretty soon they just sort of slide off your shoulder they don't have that meaning quite so much anymore um, but I invite you to hearing me, if you can reflect again on where you were, what you were feeling at that time. And I hope that at some time you will talk to one another about that experience, about what it meant to you, where you were, who you knew that might have been killed or injured, friends, family, My Greek professor at seminary, I was in seminary at the time, um, he had two young, younger cousins um, who were both firefighters on Long Island. And one of the brothers um, had been on uh, sick leave. He had some kind of surgery. And September 11th was his first day of the job. And he was assigned strictly to desk work in his continuing recuperation. Needless to say, he didn't stay at his desk that day. And he never made it out of the hotel. Um, but those are things where they may not touch you personally, but they may touch someone that you do. Are any of you former divorces? A couple of you are, yeah. Um, no matter how many years I've lived elsewhere, I still consider myself a new one. My second brother and I used to meet in New York three or four times a year, just for a long weekend. We were the kind of people we went to the opera and the museum. That sort of thing. Being in Manhattan, there was so much energy in that city. It's, it meant a lot to me. Um, but it's not the same. It will never be quite the same to those of us who live through that. Um, so here I am. Do I preach on? with disasters that wisdom is going to bring us? Do I preach on 9-11? And so I decided to preach on the gospel. Always a good choice. <laughs> now, I have to give you a little bit of background to this and, and what it started me thinking about. Um, I have done some post-grad work in uh, psychology, behavioral sciences, pastoral care, that sort of thing. And one of the charts that I remember seeing, and you have to visualize this, I'll try my best to explain it. It's a chart that 
diagrammatically shows what it means to be a self-realized person. And by that we mean, in Christian terminology, the person that God intended you to be, your best self. So if you'll think of a three-sided triangle, an equilateral triangle, all equal sides. And at the top point of the triangle is the ideal self. That ideal self is who you want, who you want to strive to be. Your ideal of what would be perfection for you to become. That's your ideal self. Now down in this triangle point over here is the real self. Now you know why it's all laid right down from the ideal. The real self is who you know you really are. This is where the warts and all come in. Okay. Now on the third point of the triangle is who you think others think you are. Not who you think they are, but who you think they look on you and say, this is who she is. Okay. So you have your ideal self, your real self, and the person that you think others identify as who you are. And it's because of that opening to our gospel that maybe we think about that. Jesus asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? It's that third point on that triangle. People you know they've heard people saying that he is. <laughs> And then he asks, and they tell him, John the Baptist and Elijah and one of the prophets. Now, why don't they just come out and say, you know, like Peter did in a minute, you know, he was in silence. Well, here had been on the side before Jesus. It's nearly impossible for us to forget 2,000 years of Christian history to a point before Jesus came to be born and lived on this earth. But for these disciples, this was something brand new, never known before. In the Hebrew Bible, the term for Messiah meant um, the anointed one. We also use the term Christ with anointed. But who were the anointed ones? They were the kings. They were the emperors. They were the secular rulers, but were anointed by God. And so when Peter says, you are the Messiah, this is really something revolutionary as far as the followers of Jesus were concerned. This was something new. But it's also why Jesus tells the disciple, who, in fact, he orders them not to tell anyone about him. Don't spread the word that I'm Messiah, that I'm the anointed king, because that's going to make the real kings pretty upset. And they're going to kill me, which is in fact what they do. So there's a lot going on in this 
Who do people say that I am? And who do you say that I am? Uh, in the part where Jesus turns to Peter, because Peter has been trying to tell him, don't talk about this. We're going to undergo great suffering and um, be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed. And after three days, by the end, don't talk us about it. Don't talk about it. And he says to Peter, get behind me. What a slap in the face that was the man. That was something. His chief was For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. This was the first time in Mark's gospel that, first of three times, that Jesus tells his disciples that he will be arrested and undergo suffering and be crucified, die, and rise again. So this will be a repeated theme that will come on in this time forward in the gospel. And again, he stresses that they not tell others because it will just bring on that tragedy more quickly. Now, at this point, as a preacher, I should be ready to ask you, and we're probably expecting it, who do you say that Jesus is? But I'm not going to do that. <laughs> um, I would prefer for you to reflect on who you think and feel that Jesus is.
Then think about that real self. Who are you really? And don't beat yourself up, but acknowledge where you have fallen short. Maybe the ideals that you held as a young person have changed. Well, now is the time to take stock of who that ideal self now is and who your real self is and what needs to grow and change and develop to bring that real self closer to the other. And then reflect on who you think other people think you are. How do other people see you? Are you showing out in society, out among friends, out with family? Are you showing them the worst of the real self? or you're trying to achieve the ideal self. Where do you go from there? It's all about growth. It's about listening to wisdom when she speaks, even if she speaks harsh words. It's about listening to the disciples who they report that Jesus is to Jesus. But then, who Jesus has become to them, represented by Peter saying, we are the Son. We are the one You are our heaven, as well as earth. So think about these things. Reflect on what you know about Jesus just from the Christian history. But more importantly, what Jesus is to you in your personal life. When have you felt down and out? When have you felt like your own personal 9-11 has just happened? What are the thoughts, but even more importantly, the feelings, the emotions? And when were you as close to your ideal self as you could possibly be? When were you in love? Remember that time <laughs> when sort of the whole world could go by and you were just floating on air? What has changed to make the worst of your times better? And what has happened to those euphoric times that have brought you back down to earth, but still knowing that you're in the same place. And how can you show that to others who need to know that Jesus is the Messiah? So that's your assignment for today.
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Wesley, K, 
Kathy, Samantha, Tristan. And those we name silently or out loud. May they experience your healing, love, and for the members of our armed forces serving at home and abroad. Yours, Lord, is the kingdom. Yours, power, and glory. We pray that all who have wearily struggled to death may know the joy of burdens laid down and new lasting life transforming them through the eternal love of God. We pray for the repose of the soul of Wayne, Richard, Mary, Terry, Pastor Solomon Drake, Brother William Porter, Gordon. Yours, Lord, is the kingdom. Yours is power and glory. We pray that we may find new joy in giving and serving freely without thanks, rejoicing in the privilege of following Jesus. We give thanks for those celebrating their birthdays and wedding anniversaries this week. Yours, Lord, is the kingdom. Yours, power and glory. We pray for St. Thomas Clarkdale. And we acknowledge the traditional people of this land on which we stand, paying our respects to them for their care of the earth and all creation. Receive us, O God, as you receive the child in Capernaum, for we yearn for your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, oh God we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Now the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace, you guys. Please be with you. He's on that side. He's <laughs> here with you. He's here with you. He's here with you. He's here with you. He's and thanks for this. Thank you. Do you live in Concord? Yes. Yes. I've been there 17 and a half years. So it's Hello, Cheryl. Nice to see you. Yes. Good to be back. For the most part. <laughs> Judy came here, I, 
I was on the search committee at the time, and I'm thinking, I'm not going to be her. I know who she is. I know what she does, and I know what she's going to say. But when she came here, I asked her, and I, the reason I'm saying this is because I saw you wearing your cross. We're all daughters, and Pastor Judy founded the Daughters of the King here at St. Peter's. So I know who you are, I know where you're from, and I know who, what people think you are also. So, <laughs> Thank you so much for being here with us today. Then, then do I have to warn you to keep silent about it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think what she's doing and what she has done and what she will continue to do is what God has asked her to do. You cannot remain friends with people who are not good people all the time. And I would call on her to ask her to do us a favor. And I, I had to pray on it because Pastor Judy was here. She left because of medical health. And the reason she sat down is because of some condition that she had. So I prayed on it and I prayed on it. And I said, what the heck? I'll call her anyway. All she could do is say that. And she, right away she said yes. And we'll have a conversation about her being in rotation here with us. So we had her as our figure and we will have her as a preacher from time to time. So again, thank you, um, Pastor Judy, for being here with us. I failed to make announcement from time to time, and Kari had warned me several times, you need to write down what you're going to say, because you're going to forget everything you're going to say. But I didn't listen to her, and I forget everything. So today I did write something down, Kari, and one of the things that I keep forgetting during this time of pandemic, and the continues of this Delta virus, and the fact that thank you guys for continue to wearing your mask. As Pastor Judy said, who does Jesus want us to be? We're here for the community, not just for ourselves, but to make sure that we stay home. And I know that people need prayer, and the Daughters of the King have a uh, form in the back that if you need prayer for any reason at all, Please fill it out and we will do the prayer for you. We will pray openly. If that's what you would like, it would be uh, mentioned during the prayers of the people. Or the daughters just pray silently with you every morning. So if you have any need, there are several back there that you can fill out and hand to myself, put it in the basket. We have two daughters over there, Marianne and Deb. I think, oh, I think. The person who already prays for people, sure. So please do that if you need prayers. Again, thank you for worshiping with us today. We ask you to continue to follow us on www.stpetersepiscopalcg.org. We have evening prayers at 6 p.m. on Tuesday online, complaint on 6 p.m. online on Tuesday. And once again, I want to remind you guys that convention is beginning on October 9th. Business meeting only via Zoom, not in person. On the 15th of October at 1 p.m., it starts in person. The Right Reverend Michael Corey of Presiding Bishop will be the guest speaker. And it goes through until the 16th at 4 p.m. I asked last time for alternate or delegates to convention is Marianne Gosling, Linda Good, and myself that will be the delegate that will represent St. Peter's. But in the event I cannot go or Linda cannot go or Marianne cannot go, we need people to sign up as alternate. So if you'd like to be an alternate, please see me today and thank you. Pastor Judy birthdays. Birthdays. Oh, okay. Are there any birthdays that are not worth you? We have one that I know of. Are you going to try to come? No. So that is.
tomorrow. And so that was yesterday. I'm going to ask for it my dad, so please give me a side hand. All right. I'm sure you're all familiar with this one. Do you have a purpose? No. no. Um, it's uh, the one that we always use for birthdays, and there are no anniversaries. Okay. And it's a different one for that. So together, if you remember it, oh God, our God, I pray in your name. Look with favor, we pray for your service. In another year, I pray that they may grow in wisdom and in grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of our lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Brought forth the human race, 
and bless us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you call us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born for woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood and reconcile us. By his wounds we are healed. And therefore we pray to you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God our Father and Christ, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, Father, we have, who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friend and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me.
God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another. And you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of the Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Creator, Redeemer, and Sacrifice, be with you this day and remain with you forevermore. Amen.